Delia talked about um, the, the broader issues when stakeholder engagement. And this, this too, just goes through the same. Um, some of the key issues we communicate, of course, the benefits, the risks, um, commitments, obligations. Uh, we talked about issues to do with waste, um, the kind of fears people have. Uh, why nuclear at all? Uh, people want to know why, why in my backyard and uh, there's a NIMBY not in my backyard. We got a whole uh, siting process. Uh, why are you locating it where we are? And those, those are come of some of the issues that, uh, uh, of course, uh, do come up. We talked about INIR, and I think uh, Engineer Eric alluded to it in the morning. And we had an INIR mission here, the first INIR mission that was done for Kenya for phase one of the nuclear power program. And uh, actually, it was cited as a best practice. Um, what we were able to do in terms of um, uh, stakeholder engagement at that time. So, the public opinion survey to identify many interests and concerns of stakeholders, and then um, we were able to sensitize the policy makers, uh, train journalists, and uh, roll out of public education and uh, initiatives of that sort. And that, that, that was uh, very critical um, to what the agency wanted to achieve at the time. So public education and awareness, um, of course, to increase understanding and acceptance. And uh, we've been emphasizing all afternoon transparent communication and information dissemination. And uh, I think earlier we talked about the difference between misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation could be ignorance. Disinformation is very deliberate. Um, and we have agents of disinformation as well. Um, a, a lot in, in, in this kind of uh, endeavors. We talked about um, community engagement, so very key. We had the Deputy Governor of uh, Kilifi County here, one of the um, potential sites in Kenya, and um, this, this just shows some of the kind of community engagement done to sensitize people on, um, on the why uh, of nuclear energy and uh, why in my neighborhood. Uh, what are the benefits? What are the risks? Um, very important. Uh, what are we going to do? The, the, the bugbear issue is what are we going to do with nuclear waste? And William Magwood IV uh, would answer that question better than most uh, on the planet. Uh, having, uh, having been in the USNRC and uh, um, with his vast knowledge, but um, so very critical. And uh, that's, that's one of the issues that uh, is addressed. So that's I'll just show some of the community engagement. This uh, further community engagement. I think you can see the uh, senior down there um, in the sweltering heat. And uh, this is just some of the engagements. That's a principal secretary who works with the cabinet secretary who's been here just so long ago and engaging county governments and um, uh, you know, giving back in terms of um, to the community as well, community uh, through corporate social responsibility kind of initiatives. STEM outreach, um, very critical. Uh, I think in the morning um, there's a lady who asked, um, a young graduate engineer who was asking, so what happens? And I think the CEO um, did emphasize that um, the young Kenyans uh, are the drivers of this project going forward. So we have a lot of STEM emphasis. We have what we call nuclear student ambassadors. Uh, we have mentorship programs for children, so we go to schools and um, they're able to become part of this. And uh, there are debates uh, we do, and uh, we also uh, entice them with essay competitions. So they do essay competitions um, for schools and even for universities as well to be able to um, get people to be of mind in terms of what we can do in terms of uh, nuclear energy development. Academic engagements, I've just talked about that. And um, so we do, we do quite a number of this with uh, universities as well and other such like institutions. This um, open days and uh, you know, more kind of public information centers which you set up um, during um, kind of events that happen all over, um, equivalent of almost like roadshows and things like those. So we have exhibits, uh, news models, and other things that are able to reflect uh, nuclear energy in uh, various parts of the country.
And then there is environmental conservation, a uh, very key uh, initiative. We're talking about nuclear, uh, having being green energy. I think that's one of the things uh, that popped up a lot, people saying that nuclear is green energy. But apart from green energy, we say that nuclear is clean energy. And so we want to emphasize that, because uh, some of the concerns people have are around biodiversity um, sites, um, marine environments, and things like those. And so we, we emphasize we are part of the environment. Uh, just a disclaimer, it is me driving the tractor there. And yes, I am driving it. Um, it, it is moving. <laughs> some of the challenges, um, there's a lot of nuclear phobia sometimes. Sometimes due to either the lack of information, sometimes due to the way people have always grown and developed. Um, just make, let me give you an example. If a snake was to slither here, what would everyone do? Everyone would run for the door. Would somebody wait to find out, is that snake? And we, we have garden snakes, very common. Um, but no one's going to ask, because everyone is going to want to run away. But not all snakes are poisonous. Not all snakes are harmful. We still need snakes because we need the, the venom, okay? Uh, to extract that venom because it does some good things as well, okay? So, but, but what's the natural knee-jerk reaction? Run. So there's some people here nuclear, what's the natural reaction? Danger. Um, so so, so th those kind of things, the myths and misconceptions around it. Uh, Anti-nuclear lobby groups who sometimes do exactly what we were talking about, disinformation. Okay? Uh, propaganda, uh, issues like that. Uh, the biases people have because of um, what they've seen, where they've, uh, where they've grown. Uh, a whole generation that grew up doing uh, nothing but Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you know? And uh, things like those, and that becomes the ancient myth. But with the demographics, and that's where you have to segment, um, because the, the younger um, people you um, engage with, the younger stakeholders, do understand these issues better uh, than, than, than some of those who would, would fear. And uh, then there's inertia, for, as, as I'm alluding to, from historical precedents, what people know from the past. And they have that inertia, and they don't want to get out of it. And um, that fear grows in them. Um, so it's... it's um, it's, 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 a, it's a whole uh, panoply of issues. So some of the things we've seen and observed, information is key. Um, information is key. There's nothing to dispel uh, disinformation and propaganda as just ensuring people have the information regularly and continuously. Political commitment uh, as a country. I'm glad uh, the previous speaker has just reaffirmed uh, the government's commitment uh, to nuclear energy uh, less than five minutes ago and gone away with uh, two boxes of chocolate courtesy of uh, uh, so um, I hope you've left one for me and delay as well um, use of concrete evidence to showcase benefits do doing things that are concrete in, in nature engagement of the youth okay tapping into the youth because they are very vocal voice um, um, my friend from Ghana just mentioned Kenyans on uh, Twitter. Now it's Kenyans on X. And the way they sorted him out once. Um, because he was doing things which are unmanly. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, that, that is the Kenyans. And it's not only you they've taken on. They've taken on Uganda, they've taken on South Africa, they've taken on Nigeria, they've taken on... They take on anyone. And um, I, th I think it's one of the most vibrant um, kind of uh, social media group. Um, and it's amorphous and it's everywhere. Uh, so who, who, is, uh, who is Kenyans on X? It's you, me, and uh, him, and everyone, you know? Um, because once, we, once you contribute, uh, you, you give to that motion. So th that, that, that's a very important. Uh, and then their networks can reach other youths and information is spread effectively. We talked to you about STEM engagements and how vital they are and uh, being able to build the workforce. Uh, I remember um, Engineer Ohada, but he's, he's a, he's a, he was a president of all the engineers in Kenya not so long ago and then they decided he'd had enough of his term 
And then like uh, most African presidents, he gracefully stepped down uh, <laughs> at the completion of that uh, period. So um, that, that, that was good. But um, it, as he says, being able to develop uh, the potential in people, uh, exposing them, um, the master's courses in Korea and uh, elsewhere, which have been very useful. Um, and of course, very key, um, start with uh, the willing, those who have some level of understanding that you can build on before you just move to everyone. So you have to do it in a systematic way. Start with those who are willing, who have some knowledge, who have some level of, uh, and this can be the champions, ambassadors, who can be able to inspire others and they become part of the voices that you can use. Um, and then after that, you can focus on the hard to get stakeholders, uh, creative solutions um, to enable them to reach out to them, um, being able to brand nuclear energy better. Now, one, one, one of the key aspects we're doing, uh, this morning we were told about uh, uh, the Nuclear Society of Kenya, which is a brand new baby. And uh, I don't know, David, you said you're the president or the chairman? You see, it's, it's, it's crazy. Everyone in, this, everyone in Kenya wants to be a president of something. So on that row, uh, incredibly, on that row, the third row there, we have three people calling themselves presidents. President of engineers, president of, uh, president of women in uh, nuclear Kenya, and president of uh, Nuclear Society of Kenya. And uh, somewhere in this room also is the president of the East Africa Association of Radiation Protection. I don't know where she is. Okay? So we have... Uh, we have like four presidents, and then there is uh, Kenya Young Generation in Nuclear, where are they? Uh, Chesori was somewhere there, also a president. You know? So we, we got so many, we got, we got so many of those, yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so, so something, something very interesting and enticing, but the more the voices, the better. Um, so these partnerships are very useful. We have uh, my friend Nadim Hashim here from uh, Nadim Hashim from Kenyatta University, where there is a, there's a whole uh, setup to be able to get uh, virtual learning from uh, the centre up north. You know, um, IE has done an incredible job there, and so th there's that there's that good interconnection there, and the students there are able to benefit from that. In fact, we did visit there with the Deputy Director General of the IEA just uh, a few months ago, and uh, the, the wonderful reception, and the students were very engaged, and very engaging. You know you can be engaged, but not engaging. Uh, so they were both engaged and very engaging, and th that's, that, that's, that was very useful. Uh, so all these bodies I'm mentioning, plus others, uh, we also work with them and through them to be able to send the message, because the more the voices, the better. We have uh, our colleagues from the Kenyan Nuclear Regulatory Authority. Um, I know the, I've seen several of them here, and um, we also work with them uh, very closely, because they are the regulatory body, and um, their voice also needs to be heard in these matters. Um, but overall, what I would say is that um, uh, so-called engagement is a continuous process. Um, you never reach a point and say, now we have, we got them in the bag. Uh, because the goal is not about bugging, they're about understanding continuously. And as things develop and evolve, uh, that understanding still needs to be maintained. Um, we've had ebbs and flows in that respect um, as a country because we've seen um, periods of very high, and then when you decide uh, on a potential site again, you know, you have to try and build it up and uh, those kind of things. Uh, but it's 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 a it's it's a good it's a good endeavor. It's a good journey, and uh, I believe that uh, the experiences of various African countries, um, when read and uh, shared, can help um, us have more vibrant, uh, more robust engagements um, collectively. And um, <coughs> uh, Kenya is fond on that track. And um, I've seen, uh, because I've seen uh, part of Uganda does in some international, you know, uh, meetings and what, I've seen presentations, I've seen from other parts of the continent. So I have a 
fairly good appreciation that um, some of the issues we face are similar. Uh, the approaches to dealing with them, sometimes we use different approaches, but uh, it's very critical. And um, as you had said, Delia, very important to understand who the stakeholders are, to segment them, uh, and to know that what each segment or stakeholder segment requires, uh, because the message is as important as the messenger. In fact, the messenger, without a good message, is uh, just a guy with flip-flops who is uh, coming along, you know. So you, you need to have a, a good message um, to, to, to impart across and um, then do it uh, succinctly and uh, clearly. Um, nuclear can have jargon, so you have to break down the, the technical issues and, and, and to make it palatable to a w wide audience. And that's why you have to segment your audience, because if your audience is academia, it's different from a group of village elders, you know? This group from, uh, is different from a group of uh, fisher folk who may want to talk to, to understand how the marine environment could be affected by a nuclear power program, and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. So th those, those are very useful things to, to consider uh, in this regard. But uh, with those um, few or many words, I think I rest my case on the Kenyan perspective, and uh, I now defer back to Delia.